Mulu. Shrouded in mist, it pulls us in like an enchantress, captivating us with her beauty. Blessed with panoramic views and spectacular sceneries, her undeniable grandeur envelops us even more. The cool mountain air descends into the valley and the forest comes alive with a symphony of sounds and sudden but rhythmic movements. Tucked in the island of Borneo, it is considered one of the most biodiverse places on the planet, with at least half of Borneo's known flora, fauna, and fungi species being found here. Its dense equatorial rainforest is also home to numerous rare and indigenous plants and animals, and more are quietly waiting to be discovered. Inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Natural Site, Mulu is one of only a handful of sites in the world to satisfy all four criteria. What a fitting honor. Measuring over 50,000 hectares, the Gunung Mulu National Park boasts a variety of geological marvels, a wonderland that can be witnessed from both above and below ground. It is a breathtaking exhibition of nature's splendor containing 17 different vegetation zones from lowland alluvial forests to montane ecosystems. The dramatic, famed and extraordinary structures of razor-sharp rocks known as the pinnacles are a sight to behold. Like a scene from a fantasy world, the extraordinary structures of razor-sharp rocks jut out from the heart of the jungle and stand up to 50 meters high. What's more, unique underground chambers, cave passages and cave systems will leave you in awe of their massive sizes and intrinsic features. Fast flowing rivers and clear jungle streams, some inviting, others mesmerizing, traverse the green expanse of the forest. Over the years, the extensive underground network that is there today was carved out by the movements of the rivers and rushing water, as well as by heavy rain. The underlying rivers cut and shape the caves carrying limestone waste to the cave mouth or spreading it throughout the system. Ranging in altitude from about 50 meters above sea level to over 2,000 meters, the various topographic features seen here are truly remarkable. Dominated by Gunung Mulu, the area is the most studied tropical karst landscape in the world. While a geological history spanning millions of years in the making may be seen in the astonishing concentration of caves. The variety of rocks and soils that make up Mulu's environment have greatly influenced not only its incredible geomorphology, but also the region's wonderful biodiversity. Mulu is truly an astounding natural beauty and wonder deserving of the world records it holds, and it's no surprise why. In terms of life forms, rainforests are incredibly rich biomes. It is estimated that over 50% of all known species on Earth are thought to have their origins in the rainforest, along with 80% of all land animals. What makes Mulu even more special is that numerous endemic species of animals and plants have their evolutionary and distributional centers here. Looking above, the magnificent canopy plays an important role in the overall forest ecosystem.
The canopy, which is made up of the forest's leafy top layer, provides shade for the layers below and filters out most of the sun's rays, creating an almost magical appearance. These towering trees grow straight up, have no branches or leaves until nearly at the top, and have relatively shallow root systems because nutrients are largely found on the soil surface and moisture is plentiful. However, there are also some tree species found here that have prominent roots that helped to strengthen them. Look, your eyes may play a trick on you though. You might mistake them for a certain kind of reptile. They can be anything from tiny, unnoticeable vines that cling to the tree to those that are as thick as trees and seem to float in the center of the forest without support. Slithering up these trees are creepers, vines, and lianas, which are abundant in the canopy and make up a substantial amount of the plant life in the tropical rainforests of Mulu. The lianas, a beautiful name for an eerie-looking plant, are a form of woody vine that emerges from the ground as tiny, self-sustaining shrubs and depends on other plants to climb up the canopy in search of direct sunlight. And what are those? These plants depend on the physical support of other plants by growing on their surfaces. Their roots firmly anchor them to the host without causing any damage. Epiphytes or air plants firmly anchor themselves to other plants and are essentially photosynthetic organisms that obtain their nutrition from rain, air, and other debris. Now, let's go down below and take a closer look at the forest floor. It is one of the main places where decomposition occurs, which is crucial for the survival of the forest as a whole. Consisting primarily of shed vegetative elements such as dead leaves, branches, bark, and stems, they exist in all manners of decomposition above the soil surface. Here, Large and spread out tree roots frequently develop under the ground surface in order to obtain the nutrients they require for growth. Blanketing the ground, we see leaf litter that acts as a protective layer for soil conditions. This leaf litter is unbelievably valuable, so it has quite an unbefitting name. It is here that millions of tiny organisms are all part of a rich food web. Many of them feed on dead plant and animal debris, providing sustenance so other living things can flourish. Imagine what will become of the forest ecosystem without them. So, what else is on the forest floor? Hundreds of feet at the bottom of the canopy, it is often dark and humid. But in this ill-lit atmosphere, however, remnants from the upper forest layers create a kind of habitat for some special ground-dwelling organisms. Decomposers such as worms, termites, snails, lizards, beetles, and fungi thrive on the forest floor. These are just some of the organisms that are responsible for breaking down the decaying materials when organic matter falls from not only plants but also animals. Down here, the abundance of small creatures provide enough food for predators as well. On a more serious note, 
life on Earth depends on the creatures that live in the decomposer level of a biome. They are involved in almost every cycle of nutrition on the Earth. Think of them as the stewards of an environment. So, without them, what will happen? Dead plants and animals would continue to accumulate, trapping the nutrients needed by the soil. An ecosystem's entire biogeochemical cycle will be impacted if the composer community is harmed or disappears. If this happened on a wider scale, the entire world would be in danger. rainforest, like what we see here, is essential to maintaining the vitality and health of our world. Mulu unquestionably embodies the phrase, beauty with a purpose.